How's it going, everybody? It is your favorite apostates. I am McKay. And I am Jordan. And we are back again, back at it. It's been a, sh a shorter absence if you were watching our live stream with us last Tuesday night. We were not really sure what was going on at the time of filming. Got it all together on Tuesday, and honestly, it was pretty awesome, fun, and cool. So check that out if that's something that you're interested in watching. So we will be going live again. Tomorrow night. Tomorrow night. Tuesday. Yeah, Tuesday. <laughs> I think that's Depending going on why to be, you're watching this. Yeah, we're going to be... Uh, Tuesday Probably doing that on a weekly basis, I think. Seven? Sure. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Whatever whatever it was last time. We'll put up a seven o'clock uh, mountain time. A little reminder for it on the YouTube before we go live and everything like that. So everybody can be in the know. But it was really fun. Come and drop by and hang out if you can. And if you can't, let us know why and we'll maybe think about reconsidering uh, the time and everything like that. Also, we are doing another watch party this month with an updated Mormon cringe movie from 2015. So, it's the same one. But, but y'all requested the newer version. Yeah, let me tell you, it's the only version that I had seen before. I thought I had seen the original one that we were watching the other day, but then I realized, whoa, this is actually really different from what I'd seen, so. The new one has great production. It is a musical, great songs, it's amazing. I did not choose to do this again. The patrons who participated they in the watch spoken. party decided that they wanted to watch it. So we're gonna be doing that yeah. again this month. I haven't decided on a date yet, but it will be this month, so. We'll probably do that a lot. There's a lot of stuff that I don't wanna watch. We recently discovered where the Living Scriptures headquarters is, and I was like, oh, we gotta watch some Living Scriptures episodes for sure not to mention we have hours of exclusive content on our patreon videos just like this so please go check us out on patreon it supports us and we love our patrons yeah so there we've got the shameless plug the shameless plug out of the way right off the bat and i think that's all we've got the uh 50k milestone giveaway is still in the works so uh stay please tuned. stay tuned for that we will get it done don't worry we have not forgotten it we're not sweeping it under the rug we're just this slow. is this is for the people so yeah we're just slow we want to make sure everything gets done right so jordan was the picker of the topic today she loves that r slash fundy snark uncensored this one has her own sub. She doesn't even need FSU. She's got her own deal. Today we are talking about Brittany Dawn, and I have wanted to cover Brittany Dawn for a while just because she's such a freaking train wreck. And just when you think you've like seen it all and you've like got everything under you under your belt, and you're like, okay, I'm piecing this together, she does some other fucking shitty thing, and you're like, oh god, okay. So there's more to the story. So. I wanted to talk about her because she's a disaster. She is your ideal white Christian influencer. Jesus is my whole personality person. My soul personality Yes, trait. the only. And so she is about as cringe as it gets, in my opinion. She's like, I feel like she's more of a modern influencer, like appealing to like millennials and like older gen z yeah and so she's definitely on the jesus trend wave on social media she's making jesus cool she is making jesus cool her and her only but in like the worst way possible <laughs> honestly but in like Let's the most real. secondhand embarrassment that you could possibly contain in yourself basically yeah so there is a lot of problematic things with Brittany Dawn and you could probably do 50 videos and, you know, only scratch the surface of half of the shitty things that she's done. So for today's video, I'm just going to run through some of like the big plot points that she's done, like just to give you like a, if you're not familiar with Brittany Dawn at all, so you can kind of have yeah. a reference point. And then I want to for the rest of the time, react to her TikToks because they are truly just, they're gold. They're comedy they gold marvelous. and I need to share it with you, okay? If you would like to get into something that is a little more substantive and all encompassing, you could check out Fundy Friday's video about it right here. We will always plug Fundy Fridays. Obviously I'm 
got the merch on. <laughs> uh, but they did a really good job uh, really digging into, digging through the shit and finding some of the absolute worst of the worst in when it comes to Britney Dawn. So For real. check that out. I'm not going to go into any detail. And if you're a Britney Dawn snarker, you're going to be like, oh my God, you missed so many things. And I hear that and I get that, but we just can't cover all the things. So I'm just going to give an overview and there will be things that I miss. And if you really need the tea, you can go to Brittany. What is it? R slash Brittany Dawn. Yeah. R slash Brittany Dawn snark on Reddit. We'll link it in the description. We will link it. Shout out to them. They have some of the most like thorough. It is masterful. <laughs> what they've done in that sub. And if I was Brittany, I don't know how she can sleep at night for a variety of reasons, but not the least of which is all of these people are very aware of everything that she's done and keeps a very close eye on the bullshit she's currently peddling. To begin, like in quick summary, why Brittany is where she is is because she was a fitness influencer. Um, she used to do fitness competitions, like the bikini competitions, and she started like Instagramming her journey, like her fitness journey, what she does at the gym, blah, blah, blah. So that's basically where she started. So it was like 100% fitness focus, like your typical gym bro, but like female version. What do they call that? I have no idea, honestly. Good gym bitch. (laughs) (laughs) Gym gal. Gym gal. There There you you go. go gal pals the gym the gym gal okay that's kind of where she started and she she got like major momentum with instagram and started gaining quite a big following so with that being said she um and this is like minor detail but she considered herself a personal trainer i know there are legit personal trainers who have like like legitimate qualifications to be a personal trainer i don't know if she has those based on what i'm going to tell you about i'm going to assume that she doesn't but that could be wrong that's allegedly i don't know that for sure so in 2014 she starts to sell online programs for fitness so they're like customized but not really customized but somewhat customized fitness plans that she's selling so that you can look like her right She's selling... That's that's a weird vibe. Her image, right? Because... That's a weird vibe. People watch her and they're like, oh my yeah. God, I want to look like this woman. Yeah. If she's looking like she does now, then I don't know why that was appealing. That's just me. <laughs> that's just me. <laughs> that's just me. So she the, started... The aesthetic that I'm going for over here is ex-Mormon Jenna Marbles. So... <laughs> the best Too compliment. many people have commented it. Not too many. Not. Please tell me because I love it. <laughs> You're so vain. I love Dana Marbles. I love her <laughs> so much. I wish she'd come back to YouTube. Okay. So fitness stuff starts selling her plans and shit kind of goes awry because there was some misgivings about what plans she was actually sent, like selling, whether they were like actually customized to the person yeah. and these people are paying for this and she's saying, you know, here it is. And she's paying, like people are paying her for check-ins so you can like talk with her like one-on-one and be like, here's what I'm doing. Where can I improve? And so. <laughs> I mean, if you're paying for something over the internet that says it's customized, but you never get to see anybody else's products or like all the line that's available, You could probably bet that it's not, so. For real, for real. So it comes off sketch, right? So people start to piece together that there's something off here. Um, So a group of people who felt that they were scammed by what Brittany was doing, basically there was enough of them that they created their own Facebook group and they started gaining like a lot of traction because you know, her plans were like copy pasted. She wasn't offering anything like unique to the person. Mm -hmm. Like for the one-on-ones that people would pay for, she'd just be like, good job. And that would be like the feedback that she would give. And so really there was nothing, like allegedly from what I understand, there was nothing that she was offering that was really unique that you couldn't like take 15 seconds to Google. Yeah, You know what I mean? So that's kind of where she started. And then there's also some sketchy shit in there about marketing based on like eating disorders because she claims to have an eating disorder and I don't doubt it. I believe people when they say those things typically. And so she would market like some of her fitness stuff with the hashtag ED soldier. We're not talking about ED, ED. 
like eating disorder soldier. And that in my mind would be a place on social media for people to convene who have eating disorders who are like, you know, maybe looking to, I don't know, like improve. I mean, they don't yeah. need to see Brittany like constantly in the gym with potentially some disordered eating habits. So it just seems kind of sketch to be like marketing to yeah. a group of people who have disordered eating habits. Yeah. You know, you know, especially when that can be largely psychological and in order to treat things like that, you really should be trained. Yeah. <laughs> have certifications and yeah. things like that. Manipulative. So in 2019, the group of Facebook people is amassing like thousands that have been scammed by her. And so it's like starting to build, right? Like I'm sure she was like an anxious mess knowing that this was like, you know, the other shoe was gonna drop it's and it's coming. Me. So she can't like maintain the way that she's going anymore. So she, <laughs> her hand kind of gets forced a little bit because in 2019, the story makes local news in Texas. And then it picks up national steam because she's a really popular influencer. And so she makes an apology video that you can watch. Um, I don't know if it's currently like out there on YouTube it's in its entirety, but I know Jen from Funny Fridays at least has some of it where she was, she made this like really dumb fucking apology that did not like. <laughs> it was, it was like. Dude, you should have consulted somebody on this and you totally didn't. Things are obviously going on in her personal life. She's married, I think, at least once. I mean, I don't really give a shit as much about that shit because it's older, but she was married, got divorced. And as soon as all the fitness scam thing hit the news and she had to make an apology video on YouTube, she quickly realized that her grift was not working in the fitness industry. So she had to rebrand. It's rebrand time. It's rebrand time. So what did she do? <laughs> she shifted to Jesus, baby. Jesus. Grifting for Jesus. So she shifts over to Christianity and goes full-blown like crazy Christian. But this is not to ignore the fact that she tried a million other ways to get money from people that was not entirely ethical, at least in my opinion. Like she started a bunch of other businesses that were like Christian related, whether it be like modest clothing or- Ruby do. Yeah, or <laughs> she had like a tanning thing, like a tanning oil, I think. I think she did fake eyelashes at one point. So she has other things going on where she's trying to get money. Is she doing it ethically? Did they all fall out and it's not really consistent anymore? Yeah. That's to be seen. So <laughs> she starts dating somebody named Jordan. Damn. Unfucking fortunate for me. <laughs> Shameful, and we'll get to Could, why in a moment. You're you're Jordan Peterson too. That sucks. <gasps> why? Why do I have what to share a name with name. these terrible people? What an L name. Sorry, Joe. <laughs> <sighs> Disappointing. So she gets with her new boyfriend. And there's lots of tea with the boyfriend situation. And I don't want to spend too much time on her personal life, but she shifts into this total Jesus persona, right? So she's like fixated on modesty. She's fixated on not having sex before marriage. She's fixated on purity, perpetuating purity culture, all these things. And so like many of them do, like Bethany from Girl Defined, who they just have this like absolute fixation on sex and Christian sex. And all they want to do is talk about it. It's weird. It's weird. And Brittany does the same thing. And so she pretends that her and her current husband did not move in together before they got married. But that has since been debunked. And I think one of them <laughs> more recently where a friend had confirmed that they did move in together, but it was for like security purposes. Bullshit. Bullshit, babe. I, like just, just own right. your shit. Okay? okay. There is also still some speculation. I haven't, again dove in like deeply to this but there's speculation that he was still married when they first started talking so scammy behavior yeah that's not even to mention his former employer for real and <laughs> <laughs> 
this is why a picture on that one this is why i don't want to share a name with this person not because he's just like annoying because he is but um the reason why i don't want to share a name with this dude is because he's terrible but it takes it one step further he used to be a cop i guess i don't have to put up a picture <laughs> <laughs> which first of all already red flags going off so he used to be a cop and he got sued by the aclu of missouri because he was like too way too aggressive with a civilian and so we know i mean most of us know when it comes to police that it takes a lot to get fired. It takes a lot. So the fact that this dude, this homie, was fired by his police department for excessive use of force really tells you a lot. So this is an official tweet from the ALCU account or ACLU account that's verified. So Officer Jordan Nelson kicked Josh Bill's feet out from under him and slammed his face into the concrete. While Bills awaited medical attention, Nelson, Jordan Bestie, reenacted the takedown for his fellow officers were suing. So basically, he's a giant piece of shit. Garbage. Um, garbage. Garbage. I looked up to see what happened to this lawsuit, and it says it was dismissed with prejudice in 2019. And that the parties agreed to a settlement and it never went to trial. So, am I surprised? Is anyone? Bad cop Plus, alert. he never got any. The only consequence was losing his job. Yeah. Other than that. And he can go 30 minutes down the road and go and be hired at a different police department. If it's anything like it is here. True story. So, they're pieces of shit together. They go well. I know. They're like two peas in a pod. I already hate one more than the other. <laughs> <laughs> so next, into their Christian dumb, they start, I don't know if it was them both or just Brittany, but they started a nonprofit. Now, I didn't do a bunch of research on this. I don't know if this is an actual registered nonprofit, but they claim that they don't make any money and there's no financial gain from their nonprofit. But let's talk about what it is. So their nonprofit, or so they call it, is called She Lives Freed. Um, which is like the cringiest white the Christian shit I've ever heard in my life. So they began doing retreats. Red flag. Alarm bells should be going right off, off in your of head, that. right? Immediately Alarm bells. No. So she started these retreats, which she charges. She started charging $650 per retreat. And from what I understand, it is not like this extensive experience. So... Red flag. Um, it looks like in the terms and conditions, they won't issue refunds. Also a red flag. I mean, if you're talking about like lodging and things like that, I guess it does make sense, but... We'll when... get back to that. Okay. It's, it's not cute. Okay, it's not cute. So... In my opinion, there might be some sketchy shit going on there. That's totally my opinion. It's totally not substantiated. Just on, its, on face value. Just it on its face. It just seems kind of sketchy. I don't know. It seems kind of sketchy. So they also did something terrible. And I remember watching this because I somebody shared it with me and I ended up watching the whole thing. But essentially, in summary, they ended up taking advantage of... Um, of an unhoused person in their area and they claimed that they met him because he came to their church and he was unhoused and so they basically like took him in do the you know white savior fix save bullshit and so this was in jen's video also yes it yeah. was i think i'm pretty sure it was because i saw it too okay um but essentially they raised all this money for a gofundme from what i understand britney is banned from the gofundme platform so they had to use her husband's account because she can't because she's such a grifter that is uh also a big red flag i don't remember where i read that but i'm pretty sure it was in the it was in the snark sub but 
Um, they essentially didn't clarify what happened. Like, they got him a hotel. They said they were going to help him. There were some, like, murmurings that he might have needed to, like, go to treatment for, like, you know, maybe drug and alcohol addiction, something like that. Um, and so they raised $25,000 for him. And then there was no... They exploited him all over social media. I mean, God. they posted pictures of him and videos of him, and they made it into, like, this whole thing. And it was all, like, I'm so blessed that I'm able... Like, it was yeah. just a total... Like, look at me. I'm this amazing Christian white savior. Don't get me wrong. There's nothing wrong with doing good things for people who are less fortunate. Absolutely nothing wrong. But not for they your game. really need it. But yeah, when it comes off like that or it's just like really poorly executed in a lot of uh, cases like this where people are doing it over social media for the views and stuff, it just feels wrong. And so... You know, there's kind of some strict, at least from what I'm aware, rules around GoFundMe, but not like insanely so. But we don't, like he disappeared and she doesn't ever really address him other than to be like, yeah, he's doing good. They don't really bring him up anymore. The one time I saw them bring him up, it was like, he's doing well. And the other time it was like, you know, kind of like dismissive and maybe he didn't make the right choices. Mm. Like I've seen her talk about it a few times, but who knows where the money Actually, the right choices according to them. Apparently it went to James, but do we really know? So that's kind of the gist of things that she's done that's terrible. And I'm telling you, this is like the minutest amount. And I'm sure the Brittany Dawn, like regular snarkers are watching this and they're like, oh my God. And I know, I know. But the main thing I want to do is react to her TikToks because that provides a lot of context yeah. to these situations and it's just cringe. So... There's other terrible things that she did. I don't want to spend five hours on it. Yeah. If you would like to get the down and dirty details and potentially any things that I did incorrectly, which don't come for me. Don't come for me. This is a lot of information. I don't have 15 hours to, to absorb it all. So there's a group of people who will gladly teach these things to you that is not me in a much more in-depth and detailed way. So let's jump in to the TikToks. As always, uh, just off the top, we'll try to describe everything as best we can. And sometimes I will have to cut the audio just because of copyright stuff. You know how TikTok is. We'll have to cut this one. Me practicing purity. Oh. My fiance with the same testimony, patiently waiting for our wedding night. So let me retry that because I'm an idiot and can't keep up. So the first thing says, uh, me practicing purity until marriage, even though I'm not a virgin. And then uh, she cuts to God as my number one supporter. And she put a She's little- She's just wearing a blanket on her head. A blanket on her head. That's like a, I think it's like a tea towel actually. <laughs> 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 and then uh, uh just putting on her husband jacket my fiance with the same testimony patiently waiting for our wedding night cringe which is also funny that she didn't mention that he was also married before her mm -hmm. right yeah interesting yeah. She, she was married too wasn't she before yes I, I don't know why people have to go through, i mean more power to you if this is the way that you want to live your life but like one why are you doing it the second? I, I, whatever. That doesn't matter. But more to the point, why are you making a TikTok about this? Nobody gives a shit. She talks about this constantly. And it's just like Bethany. Like, yeah. let me talk about Christian sex, Christian sex, Christian sex. Like, Christian oh my sex, God. Christian sex. <laughs> Peanut butter <laughs> chocolate flavor. That's what I anyway. was thinking too. But this will be a repetitive theme. Next. This one's a good one. This one, the fucking stitch lives in my brain constantly. Why is it muted? I'm going to ruffle some feathers with this one. Oh, Sex good. before marriage. And before you get bent out of shape, let me explain. Because if you think staying abstinent is hard, try breaking soul ties. Pause. Multiple soul ties. Soul ties. Soul ties. Now, this is something I've seen circulating like Christian rhetoric more recently but this stuff is fucking toxic toxic this is purity culture at its worst soul right ties here. that sounds like 
witchy. It does sound witchy, which is super ironic because she's like, eh, new age. Yeah, eh. right. But it's just resize this. No, no. It's just toxic because it's sending the message that if you've been with somebody else, even if you know you changed your life around, you're waiting for marriage, whatever, like whatever makes sense to you, do it. We encourage it. But to be like, you've broken soul ties and these people are attached to you now and they always have a yeah. part of you because you slept with them. Like it just nothing good comes of that other than to discourage right. youth from doing that. But then we just enter this perpetual cycle of shame. Shame, shame, shame. <clears throat> right. I hate to use a uh, a TERF's written work as an example, but what the hell is this? A, a horcrux? Like... And I want to preface with this. I've seen it on both sides. I'm that girl that before I met Jesus, before I truly surrendered my life to the Lord, was trying to fill voids by sleeping around, one night stands, friends with benefits, you name it, I did it. And oddly enough, I was simultaneously at the lowest point in my life. Depression, anxiety, panic attacks, eating disorders that consume me. <laughs> Who's going to tell her that a couple things can be true at the same time? <laughs> this one's good, though. And sleep paralysis, which is an encounter with a demon, and I'll get to that in another video. You see, society tells us that we have to test drive the car before we buy it, that we have to know what we're fully getting into before we commit to it. But that's not how God made us, and that's not what sex was intended for. Sex is the most powerful tool in a marriage covenant. Because in that moment, whether you choose to believe it or not, God designed sex to yoke yourself to the other <laughs> spirit. You are yoking. <laughs> what the fuck? Uh, oh man, she Brittany, has you... <laughs> to hear it. She has to. Did you ride? Did you test drive that car before you bought it? <laughs> oh my god! It was for me. It was the sleep paralysis. Is it ex encounter with a demon? She has not made a follow up video about this one. This one's really new. I think this one was either yesterday or the day before. And so she has not elaborated on the sleep paralysis demon thing, but I am waiting with bated breath for the explanation of how she's had encounters with demons. Right. Also the yoke, the yoking yourself to someone else in the context of sex. I don't know. Maybe you should have rethought that. The in your spirit to their spirit. You are one. Sex is not casual. Sex is spiritual. And when you're sleeping around, having one night stands, hooking up with random people, or sleeping with your significant other, you are giving bits and pieces of your soul away. Wrong. You're living in a society that perverts everything, says everyone's doing it, it's I not a big deal, and is assassinating the soul connection meant only for a marriage covenant. Sex is beautiful, but only in the right context. And that context is marriage. Sex is sacred, holy, and designed to be treated as such. As a girl living in this society that's done it both ways, I can say this. Choosing to remain abstinent until marriage was the best decision I ever made. I saw the fruit of doing it God's way. I'm living in the fruit of doing it God's way. And if you're watching this right now thinking, I'm too far gone, there's no way God would forgive me, you're wrong. I felt that way for the longest time, yeah. and it drove me further and further down that deep, dark hole. But God is the God of restoration and redemption. And when I surrendered to him, Yawn. he gave me back what the this enemy stole. This just goes and temple. goes and goes. Society won't tell you this. Sex is beautiful, but only in the context of marriage. Take it from a girl that's done it the wrong way and God's way. Hi, my name's Brittany, and I had sex before I got a hard on for Jesus. And guess what? I'm here to tell you and speak for everybody who's had sex outside of marriage that you're doing it wrong. Coming from me. Brittany, I'm the authority on this who's issue. Who's the authority on this? Who got into this like three years ago? Up until three years ago, I just used to do it with anybody I wanted to, and you know, now that I think back on it, uh, I was wrong about that. I was totally incorrect, and you know what? Jesus and the Bible told me that I was wrong about thinking that that was okay. So you know what? It's wrong. So are you are wrong. So you are also wrong. Like, I just, the snobbiness, like the high horse, like yeah. the you plebeian person, let me explain this to you. It's the condescending, uh, yeah. if you think you're too far gone, you're wrong. And I've done Actually, it both I ways. Actually, I am. Have you done it both ways? Dang. Okay, next one. We're living in, in crazy times as Christians. This one's personally my favorite. I think. I don't know if it's this one. Why is this small? Hold on. Hold on. We are living in crazy times as Christians. I mean, really stop for a moment and look around at everything going on in the world. And then I see stuff this like this. Favorite. Oh my God. And this. 
in case you're missing it, she's laying on a cross. There. The outfit, Thanks. title, and aesthetic is straight up demonic. And then Kendrick Lamar, if you missed this, he wore a crown of thorns on the stage and portrayed himself as Jesus. This literally makes me sick. <sighs> Satan isn't even trying to hide anymore. Have you ever noticed how the music industry does never try to make fun of Buddha, Muhammad, or other false gods? Uh, Please, no, 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 no. It's the also, Christians are persecuted. Buddha right. is not a god, but okay. Because the demons behind this demonic agenda know. They know that Jesus is king. They know that he's returning with fire in his <laughs> eyes, that he's returning for his bride. And whether you choose to believe it or not, there is a demonic agenda behind secular music. I'm not saying all, but these two artists in particular. Christians, now is the time to guard your ears, protect fiercely what you're consuming, and hold the line for the kingdom. Her hair looks like a broomstick. <laughs> I just... <laughs> Laughs in metal fandom with actual satanic iconography. Well, and here's Please. the thing. When I was going through, I, I had to go through these TikToks, and it literally pained me in my soul. I don't think I'm going to recover completely for the... Thing that I just subjected myself to. You you uh, soul splitted. I did. What was it called? Soul ties. Soul. You broke soul ties. I broke soul ties with Brittany Dunn. Soul tie. But I'm going through all these TikToks, and she uses secular music in her TikToks all the time, all the time. So she's like, secular music is demonic and it has an agenda. I know, right? But I can use it in my TikToks. It's fine. It's the fucking um, <clears throat> the Christian gaslighting for me too. The they do it because they know that Jesus is Lord and God is King or whatever the hell she said. Like <laughs> it just is so no. cringy. Like if I didn't know she was like actually authentically like this, I would think it's satire because she right? is legitimately way too committed to this that it almost seems like ingenuine. <laughs> you know i can i can totally see it honestly and it's just like it just perpetuate like mormons do this too like this whole like jesus is nigh the end of times is coming fill up your basement with food yeah. because the curses are on a, are upon us like and she focuses like she's yeah. like obsessed with revelations and you know that's just special yeah well and if anybody in art is making a point using religious imagery and things like that it's likely co-opted to have like paint a larger picture and things like that. So just taking the image out of context, you leave out a lot of stuff. So just saying, cares? just saying, just saying. Okay. I have, probably have to mute this, but this says mutual boundaries, marital boundaries, marital boundaries. <laughs> we abide to as Christians, just that just makes sense. No messaging, the this opposite sex one on one. If you have to tell your spouse about it, no writing in the car alone with the opposite sex. No long time with the opposite sex in general. Always notify each other of purchases over two hundred dollars before the transaction. <laughs> we, when we disagree, we validate how the other is feeling, despite if they're wrong or not. You're wrong. I am not. We do or we don't make decisions without each other always keeping our marriage at the forefront of everything did you see the air kiss right there yes <laughs> we don't entertain conversations that dishonor our spouse in any way some of this feels like just it's relationship the beginning for me advice so like Never messaging a person of the opposite sex. Never getting in a Never car with a car. person of an opposite sex. Like, do you guys work? Do you have <laughs> no, to go places? They scam and they he, do it together. He apparently has a job. But, like, have you ever... I mean... What? Like, you can't get in a yeah. car with a person of the opposite sex? Like, is somebody that vulnerable? Like, did somebody I do know. something and you now you're like... You better get in the car mm, with your mom. Don't get in the car with your mom. Sweet home Alabama up in here. God... It's unreal. Uh, I already this know one, this is going to piss me off. Her, uh, her eyebrows. <laughs> and it wasn't me. You know, we don't make fun of things that people can't change. Okay. Okay. We try not to. But I don't understand why she draws her eyebrows like this. Like, it is not okay. It can be changed. Go to Sephora. <laughs> I mean, she purports herself to be like this, you know, beautiful influencer, esthetician. But there's something way off here. Yeah. This one's gonna, I mean, this one's probably gonna make me a little mad. 
Uh, there were, I've received a handful of comments on the channel recently of people who were like, oh my God, so disappointed to hear your opinion on abortion. Bro, I don't know how that came out of left field for you because you if clearly you, haven't been watching yeah, this very long. I don't know how you watched this that long, and that was like surprising. So, oh damn it! Finding out Roe v. Wade was overturned today. Generations of prayers from intercessors were answered to get today. Nothing that our God cannot do. Honestly, it's a Paul and Morgan take. That is a Paul and Morgan take. It's a take. Bethany and Kirsten if that, take. If that were the 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 God interceding kind of idea, why did he take fifty years if he's so great and he can do everything? Why do he kill his own kid? I mean, if you really want to get uh, into yeah, it, yeah. If we're getting into it, there's there's a lot of things that we're like, bro. Why was that necessary? Like what? What and. All of them are doing that. Like, Paul and Morgan did something about this. Bethany did some. Like, every Christian influencer is out there like, Roe v. Wade oh is a victory. Oh, my God. God did this. No, some dumbass old people in Washington, D.C. in robes said differently all of a sudden. So, They probably chill. didn't. If we told them, what's Roe v. Wade? Like, with no other context, be like, they'd be like, I don't know. What? But if you mentioned Shushmorshan, they'd be like, oh, oh outrage doing the the killing them babies yeah yeah so unsurprising take really obnoxious that she yeah. she also turned comments off on this of one of course because she does that a lot with her controversial take because she's a coward yeah this is something else the most difficult and heartbreaking part about walking with jesus is Realizing that so many old friends and loved ones might not get into heaven. Okay, well. Gal pal. <laughs> wow. You actually made a TikTok about this. She's got to have beef with somebody. Like, there's got to be, like, a family member who she thinks is, like, you know. Not going to be saved. Living in sin. And she's like, guess what? You're not getting Sorry, into heaven. Sorry, not saved. Sorry. Very Christian of her. Very Christ-like. Sorry. I can't, be, I can't believe some of the things that people will film and put up on TikTok. Like, And then why? disabling the comments. Like, we've had a couple of pretty viral-ish videos. Never once Never turned off the comments, comments. because uh, we're about our shit, honestly. <sighs> Uh-oh. What is going on here? It's just never been my thing. Not into it, so not approved by me. There is a uh, so there's let's a look lot, at this list lot going here. on here. Hold on, what am I missing at the bottom? The bottom one says worshiping crystals because apparently that's a thing. Clutter. She know anything about that? Clearly, clutter. I don't think that's anybody's thing, really. Manifestation. Um, she hates manifestation. You skipped a couple. Excuse oh, you. I? Wearing socks. In bed. In bed. Smacking gum. Who's doing that? Gossiping. Okay. Euphoria. I'm assuming she's referring to the show, the show and not the feeling. Small talk. What? What? Snapchat idolizing celebrities. She's got Snapchat trauma. That's the only reason that's on there. She's got Snapchat some kind of trauma, trauma associated with Snapchat. She had a, a, like a three-year long streak with somebody and then they decided that they were going to delete the app and she lost it probably maybe there's Honestly. also some Rest speculation that her loving husband has pulled a lauren bobert's husband and oh. whipped it at a bowling alley so maybe that's why she doesn't oh. like snapchat <laughs> idolizing celebrities is she big trumpy I don't know. I would imagine. She, nothing on her TikTok. Nothing on her page? No. Okay. Usually when they are, they have something on there. I'm sure he is. I would make a joke about, but anyway. I don't know who needs to hear this. I don't know Probably who needs nobody. to hear this. But you're breaking generational curses and behaviors. That's why things don't come easy for you. You're who your bloodline has been waiting for. Um... I don't think that sound was meant for you and your context, but she does this a lot. There are a lot of patterns that I picked up on going through this woman's TikTok, and I went back pretty far, unfortunately for me. 
So almost like if it's not secular music as a sound, she's using like content from pastors, you know, some religious context or worship music that's, you know, it's like Christian worship music. But the common denominator, like among all of this, is the sounds that she uses are from black people. Like again and again and again. Like it's Yeah. Like Which here and there. Yeah. It's not an anomaly. No. And it's not rare on TikTok to see that because there's been constant discussion about how white people on TikTok constantly get far more attention when they're doing the same like dance that's a black creator was had choreographed. So without giving credit, without gr- giving credit. And so. she's been called out for that numerous times. And I think the majority of times now she just turns off comments because people have called around. They're like, these aren't your words. Like you're not saying this, like you're legitimately yeah. taking this content particularly from a black from a black creator and saying it applies to you as a white person using it in your white person context like mm, yeah there's something totally about that that just ig- rubs me the wrong way like isolating the context of the the conversation and everything like that so it's just weird it's weird to me yeah. like when we have it like perpetually consistently being a pattern then it's something that i'm like mm, alarm bells we're not odd. saying that you know you can't listen to black creators as a white person because somebody in the comments is going to run up here and say that because they're already like they're already heavy breathing about it right now <laughs> if you listen <laughs> closely you can hear them <laughs> it's not what we're saying but when she has this like weird pattern of doing it like it's just like it's why weird. doesn't she do that with a bunch of white pastors it's because they all say shit unhinged things on tiktok <laughs> Like every one of them, like you think of any popular pastor or preacher on TikTok, Greg they're either uh, they're either LGBTQ affirming, which is good, and mm-hmm. that would be an excluded category for Britney, or they're fucking Greg, Greg Locke and Patriot Church and those completely unhinged. But it just is it. kind of weird. Crazy. Also, her tan w- rubs me wrong. Isn't that funny? Haha, <laughs> rubs me wrong. She is a, what? Rubs you wrong? Because you got you rub your tan in. I get it. That went over that my head. That was a terrible anyway, joke. Sorry. Probably everybody was like, "That's dumb." But she is white, and this woman is like. I mean, just look at the backs of her hands. It's like, mm, I mean, it's like bordering on entering the blackface arena for me. Like she is so dark. Like when you look at like the top of her head and like she's she never doesn't have like the tan like i've never seen a video of her when she doesn't and it is so much darker than her actual national like her natural skin tone just saying just saying (laughs) oh wendy williams we love you to the men who aren't too manly to help clean Aren't too busy to hold hands while driving. Aren't too masculine to go shopping with her. Who always open her door and cook. <laughs> Thank you for being the... Oh, God damn it. I'm so slow at reading. The example Jesus of Christ. how women should be treated. There you go. Um, yeah, here. I actually do the shopping. I probably shop more than Jordan does. You uh, cook more than I do. I cook more than Jordan does. And, and we both clean. We both who's, clean. Who's too manly to help clean? Like, if you have a penis, does that mean you're exempted from cleaning? Oh, I, I just don't know uh, how to use the vacuum. I don't know how to use the vacuum. Uh, I, uh, man. I'm a what, clueless man. What, you what can't is the help cleaner me. that I use in on the windows? Is it the glass cleaner or is it the multi-purpose cleaner? <laughs> Bruh, there's not that much blood that the gets bar down there that is that on, takes away from your brain. The bar but, is on the floor. It's on the floor. The bar like, is if so this low. is what you praise your husband for doing, like the bare ass minimum, I would be embarrassed. Embarrassed. What is he making here? Can I zoom in on this? That looks what like a this? lot of butter, if that's what that is. <laughs> I hope that's not butter. That's a lot of butter. <laughs> <laughs> there's no way. She would not allow is that, that much butter. Well, and she's grass? using also. Pompous grass. I don't even it's know what like that is. It's like the influencer uh, decor. Yeah. I, I hope is. it's not butter because he's also using almond milk. So what was the purpose of using the butter? <laughs> it looks like butter. Uh, or using the almond milk if you're just going to use butter. Anyway, it probably isn't. Cringe. Okay. Why did this start like that? 
When your husband says you should go spend more time with Jesus because you're a little moody. So then she's dramatically uh, walking around okay. with her Bible. <laughs> with like, her Bible. Just tell her she's being bitchy. <laughs> Why you gotta you just roping Jesus into this <laughs> you're, one? You're really throwing Jesus under the bus because you don't want to tell her she's being a bitch. <laughs> Babe, you're really uh, getting on my nerves right now. Why don't you go spend time with the Prince of Princes, the King of Kings, Jesus Christ, the Lord and Savior? Because honestly, I can't fucking handle you right now. No. And it's <laughs> it makes me think of the Snickers commercial where they're like, you need a Snickers bar. Brittany needs Jesus. You, go sit in the corner yeah. and read your Bible, okay? Hungry? You're not you when you're hungry. Eat Jesus. Eat Jesus. <laughs> Oh my god no this is okay so this is footage from one of their retreats uh when your retreat turns into a revival with baptisms in your hotel oh jesus christ she's baptizing people non-shit uh christians in the audience let me know if this is kind of cringe and or sacrilege because just having random people baptize seems a little when I was a little a, weird. A young ish teenager, my family split time between a non denominational church and the Mormon church when we weren't really active. And this is just like really common behavior. Like non denominational, we had a ooh. giant like black pool, like pond looking thing that they would always baptize people in and they made it a big deal and they did it in front of everyone, which is really yeah. foreign for Mormons because you, they believe you have to have the proper authority yeah. in order to baptize Okay. That's someone. where I was thrown off. Sorry yeah. if you commented already, if you paused and women, comment, I've got it. Got women baptizing people. That's a no, no in Mormonism. Oh, that's a huge no, 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 no. That's what I would like to see. Honestly, obviously I don't want that to have to happen at a, getaway retreat that you paid for <laughs> yeah a like major you have grift. To pay for it yeah but uh you know love bombing anyway, you know everybody's just getting baptized we love it honestly this looked like Catherine crick at the start right there <laughs> honestly are we sure it's not do you think she'd be besties with Catherine crick I don't know. That's hard to say because Catherine's like very fixated on demons, but I guess oh, Brittany is too. Catherine Crick is fucking wild. If you haven't seen, we did a little video talking about Catherine it's an Crick. old video. Don't judge she's, us. She's, she's bad. I don't like her. Anyway, next one. I think this is the last one it looks like. Uh-oh. New age dangers. New age dangers. New age practices that let demons in. Crystals. Zodiac, Zodiac signs. signs. Evil eye symbol, mediums, mediums yoga. yoga. <laughs> this one was also set to a, a sound play. that was, uh, well, can't play, but secular music. Secular music, yeah. She has a secular fixation. Secular hip hop. Yeah. Even. Again. Um, new age things, like she's kind of fixated on this. And this is really common in like the Christian influencer sphere right now where people are like, manifesting is inviting demons into your life and like, removing God and his influence <laughs> and agency. Like they go on a whole thing. Right, I don't want to be reductionist here, but explain to me how prayer is different from manifesting. It's literally the same thing. <laughs> like I don't. And obviously I know there are nuances when it comes to manifesting and other spirituality things like that but but yoga they really in a lot of cases it just be a one-to-one -one, but they call it different things so they can maintain uh what do you call it plausible den deniability i just in a lot of cases the like, mental gymnastics you're having to go to to justify that these things are demonic like i know okay yoga pose like yoga poses are demonic because you're opening your legs and the demon's gonna <laughs> slip right in. Like what? Explain to me what is demonic about a yoga? Demon could get out or in. Or in. <laughs> <laughs> and crystals. Like what? And first of all, I don't understand. Like as a person who has crystals and doesn't worship them because I don't even know what that means. They're holy. Rocks are cool. They're literally. They're not rocks, Jordan. They're minerals. Oh my Thank God. you. They're, I mean, it makes no sense why they, they just kind of, 
they take their whole personality and they project it onto things they don't like. Like, oh, people, they, they worship crystals. Like, I understand your whole vibe is that you love Jesus. It's the, the only personality trait about you. But just because someone worships something in a different way or it's a part of their spirituality in the case of crystals, like, it doesn't mean that they're building an altar with minerals on it and they're like bowing before it and praying to these crystals and all this and so what like if that. they are but that's threatening yeah. to britney apparently it's really threatening to her like if god is so fucking powerful why doesn't he just destroy all the crystals i just come on the lengths at which she it. will go the secular music the like bro what is she even what is she even talking about with the evil eye because it's evil the evil eye symbol I honestly, I feel like I've seen this before, but what, what is even the deal? My limited understanding is it takes like off any energy, like negative energy directed oh, okay. to you and like sends it back to sender, or, like protects you energy field wise. But okay. it says it, there's people in the comments that are like, Jordan, that's not what it is. I can already hear it right now. But the whole, I mean, it's just the terminology, like evil eye. That's yeah, Satan. It's, it's got It's definitely Satan not what it's it. called. You just think that it's the evil eye. What about the... Bitch, you're you're grifting to get dollar bills that have the all seeing eye on it. Are you are you about your shit or not? Why don't you give up money? Let's see it. The Salt Lake Temple has an all seeing eye on it. It does. Fun fact. It does. But, you know, the thing that gets me about this is, you know, obviously we're coming from an ex-Mormon perspective, but especially with everything going on in the world right now, like one of the most hilarious things to me is that there's lots of Mormon influencers, not as like big as these, yeah. these Christian ones. Yeah. But it's hilarious to me because Mormons think that they're just going to be part of this like post row, like everybody, you know, sits in a circle and prays to Jesus, like... Christians don't like you. Like, <laughs> you're not part of that group. And it's going to be a really By sad day large. for you when you realize yeah. that. Because you're not part of the in-group. Yeah, they don't yeah. like you. Yeah, oh, they're they're always touting, oh, we're collaborating with these world leaders and everything uh, on, like, humanitarian projects and things like that. As if it's, like, proof that we're well, ex that, or we, the Mormons are well accepted in on the world stage of religion and spirituality and that alone is not proof like certainly there are people in that room that are like yeah come along afterthought you fucking idiot you guys have been around for like 150 200 years now like who cares and your shit is so dumb yeah like it that's the thing that kills me is like as i've seen mormons like absolutely rejoicing over these things and i'm like you're not going to be part of that club there are people that we like just in general as ex-mormons talking about like mormons being part of the christian umbrella that people have yeah. like a visceral reaction they're like mormons aren't christian like it is like this whole Thing. So it's just hilarious yeah. to me that everybody thinks they're going to all sit in a circle and, you know, be happy when that's not what's actually going to happen. Yeah. Which you can, I mean, if you are a Christian, you're like, man, they're not Christian. I totally get you. Um, it's just the way that I classify them. They are, they fall under the Christian umbrella. That's just a generalization that makes it easier to talk. That was a tangent. But anyway, people. I just, Mormons do the same thing as far as new age things. And it's, I think a lot of it is based in the, like, revelation, sketchy. Like, I also watched one of her videos um, where somebody had talked about, like, using a chip to, like, be able to scan your credit card, but oh, it's, like, God. in your hand or whatever, and everybody's like, Mark of the Beast! And everybody yeah. starts losing their shit. Mormons do that, well, too. Well, even worse but... is it usually accompanies uh, some sort of New World Order conspiracy theory, which... At its roots, always boils down to anti-Semitism, which is not good. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, it was, I don't remember, I think it was like an ad for Amazon or something. And she like it recorded herself reacting to it. And she was like, do you see what I see? <laughs> and then everybody in the context was like, Mark of the Beast. Oh my God. And totally panicking about it. But that's, I think, what a lot of this stuff is based in. Like anytime something that, you know. Even, like, I've seen some of the fundies and fundy snark who were, like, 
self-love. You're not enough, you shitty fucking person. Jesus fucking hates you and that's the way it's supposed to be. Like any type of self-love or compassion, Jesus, they're dude. like, no, hell no. That's not what not Jesus wants. Me. He wants you to not suffer. You. Like, what? You're gonna have to crawl with on blistered, bloody knees and broken <laughs> fingernails claw your way to heaven. I just, that to me is what it's Whoa, based in. Dude. It's revelation. It's yeah. desperately trying to secure their place in heaven and fearing that the second coming is coming and it's going to be bad. Like it's going to be bad because they interpret like all the bullshit that's in revelations that nobody understands. No, plenty of people do. Well, the average people don't. Average people don't yeah. understand. It's an allegory. Anyway. Most people don't understand that. Most people, yeah, they don't. <laughs> I would argue, at least in the circles that I've seen. Yeah. Even me as a Mormon, I did not realize it was allegory because I'm... 666. Six, six. What else is there? There's all kinds of stuff. Um, pentagrams. Kinds of stuff. I know, which are not even inherently evil or satanic. The There's pentagrams you... on the Salt Lake Temple again. There is. Or um, the Nauvoo Temple. There Stained is on the glass. Salt Lake Temple, I'm pretty sure, too. There might be. I could be I wrong. Thought. I just remember the... The all-seeing eyes. The red, little... white, and blue ones on the, the Nauvoo Temple. Anyway, we got on a tangent, but I hope this was a beautiful introduction to the insanity that is Brittany Dawn. I hope you enjoyed this as much as I did. The rabbit hole goes very deep, so if this is something you want to look into, head over to Funny Snark, r slash Funny Snark Uncensored, r slash Brittany Dawn Snark. Brittany Dawn Snark uh, is where yeah, you want to go. Friendy Fridays, check out their video, please. They're amazing. They're There's back other up. videos about Brittany Dawn. The... Fundy Fridays is back in full force. They had all their strikes disputed and removed from their channel. So Let's everybody go. get over to Fundy Fridays, uh, especially for this Friday, because I'm assuming that they're going to be uploading a video because they were supposed to right before they got struck. So hit them up, send them some love, buy some of their merch. Honestly, we just got uh, the poster that they were doing. So Lesbian we love to see that. Share the love. Share the love. We are not the most important people on YouTube, so. No, we are not. Well, we are thank not you, everybody. We are not even close. <laughs> by any means, by any means. I, you guys will find this funny. I had a family member this last week that told me that um, the reason I'm such a terrible person and the reason that I don't talk to other family members anymore is not because they're toxic, but because the YouTube fame has gone to my head. So. <laughs> we hit 50,000 subscribers and we just got, we got we are lost fame. in the sauce, we baby. Are, we are famous on youtube and it just is absolutely hilarious to me like do you know how insignificant we are on the please. dot of content creators please. like please stop not even close like yeah. oh my god even in our niche we are not no big. not even close anyway but you support us and that's what matters that's what matters that's what we enjoy and all of you are not insignificant that you are all greater than the sum of your parts you're amazing we, and we love, love your you. parts Whoa. <laughs> I'm going to be cutting that out. No. We love your parts. <laughs> oh, that's going to be in an out of context video. <laughs> for sure. Uh. Well, thank you everybody for sticking around. If you did, if you are not already subscribed, hit that subscribe button and that would help us out greatly. It'll also help you in the future to be able to win giveaway shit because that's all we ask is that you comment and subscribe on a particular video, which we will notify you about in the future. Thanks all to, also to all the, the listeners. You're all amazing. We love you. You're freaking awesome. And uh, we can't thank you enough. Shout out to our patrons. We already did our little plug for the Patreon, but if you need it again, you can go to patreon.com slash Jordan McKay to uh, see what we're creating over there and see some perks that we have. If you'd like to support us in another way, you can find us on Etsy. Our store is called Happy Brain Collective. We have stickers that are really cool and awesome. That we you recently had someone put the Garmies, don't get your oh, Garmies yeah, in a bunch, throw that on their on the car. Pretty cool. In a very Mormon city, mind you. If you would like a sticker like that, you can find us there on Etsy, or you can get those same designs on Shirts, mugs, sweatshirts, those sort of things at our Teespring with the link in the description. We also have our socials, which are Jordan and McKay, at Jordan and McKay on TikTok and Instagram. You can find us 
on a daily basis over at Instagram. I post all the time on Insta. Go yeah, we just hit 10,000 followers. Love it. And finally, our Discord. Shout out to the Discord. Awesome community of people. Discord besties. It runs the gamut of whoever you would like to talk to. And we have a really cool uh, amount of people on the Discord. So the link for that is in the description as well. Thank you, everyone, for joining us. We will see we you tomorrow. We'll see you tomorrow for the live stream if you can join us. Or you can see it after the live stream goes. I always keep it up so that people can watch it after the fact. So thank you all, and we will see you soon.